There are three options. Why did you give me three options? You're scaring me. Stop it. I think it was to pin the crime on the guard, wasn't it? There is only one logical reason for doing something like that. It was to pin the crime on Mr. On Guard. There is no way anyone would put a bloody button in their own pants. That's right. Mr. On Guard was set up. By the real killer, of course. And the real murderer is... Well, Mr. Wright, who in the world is a real killer then? Finally. I can't believe I managed to bring this trial all the way up to this point. Phoenix! You can't let your guard down yet! Not until the very end! The real killer, the person who planned to frame Mr. Our guard is... I don't know. I'm gonna say... It can't be Adrian. Can it? I feel like it is Adrian. I... I don't know. I don't know. I... I don't know. I need to... I... I don't know. I've never been so scared in my life that I had to get up and get something to eat because I'm so scared. Right, which of these four doesn't belong here? Up, down, left, right. Um, right? Thank you. I feel much better. I'm relieved to know you can at least pick out that much help. I worry about you. You seem to fail every time you try to make logical sense. Look, shut the f Shut, shut up, shut up. Leave me alone. Shut up. Okay, I... I thought that it was gonna be something like that. I don't... I can't... Is it Adrian? Take that! Miss Adrian Andrews, I choose you. You are Mr. Karita's killer. What? My glass is broken. Okay, so it was her. I thought it was gonna be some kind of thing like, hey, you, they kill her, yo, yeah, yeah, they kill her. No. I'm sorry, like I said, I got really nervous, so I had to get some toasted coconut cookies. But I didn't think I'd like them. I really like them. Order, order, order. Mr. Wright, this is a very grave matter. Do you have any evidence that supports your charge? Any evidence? All of the evidence points towards Miss Andrews. Look, how preposterous. You can't stick any of that on me. I can't, cannot. Would you care to test me? Then, then what about this knife? The knife was used to stab the victim after he had already he, he had already been strangled to death. It was used to throw suspicion onto Mr. On Guard, naturally. The knife covered in the defendant's fingerprints could only be taken from his room. And the only one who had dinner with him and knew which knife to take was you. Ah! The then, what? What about the button that was found in Miss Hakoma? This button was removed from the victim's body after he had already died. The only people who could have done so were the person who found his body or the killer. However, if Mr. Argar was the real killer, there was no way he would have put such incriminating evidence in his own Hakama. Huh. I got glasses for days, bitch. The only person who could have put this <laughs> The only person who could have put this button into Mr. Argar's Hakama. It's the person who went to take him to wake him from his nap, which is you yet again, Miss Andrews. Alright, I see. What about the epic guitar case? Stay on this judge! That is also another piece of evidence that incriminates Miss Andrews. Ooh, girl. Ooh, girl. Look at that back. Oh, oh, that back. That, that costume was used to hide the real killer's identity as they fled the crime, crime scene. Now, who could have known that there was such a costume inside the guitar case? It could have only been the person who prepared the costume for the victim. And that person is you, Miss Adrian Andrews. No, I... Oh, she's crying. But Miss Andrews' fingerprints were nowhere to be found on the guitar case. And it was you who proved that she was not wearing gloves at the time. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's right. No, I... That's because she did not intend on leaving any prints. If anyone had found out that she had touched the case, they would have asked her why. So she stops. Stop avoiding any prints. She used a towel or something else to open it. But the glass of the tomato juice is a different story. Miss Andrews purposely left her fingerprints on the glass to show that yes, indeed, she was a classic day's discoverer of a dead body. Ah! 
And to top it all off, there is this photo. A photo of the killer as they exited the scene of the crime. No reasonable person on earth can believe that uh, can believe this Nicholas Samurai is Mr. Ongarn. He wouldn't be too much. He would be much too short for his own costume if it was him. Speaking of how tall people are, Miss Andrews, you are also kind of short in stature, are you not? Wow. Please stop. No. Well, how about it, Miss Andrews? No. I've got her this time. Miss Andrews? I... I... I refuse to testify. What was that? Th there's a law. It says I can't be forced to testify about something if I... if it can't incriminate me. Not gotcha. sure. Well, yes. You are absolutely correct, Miss Andrews. The law does provide us with a way to avoid self-incrimination. By allowing a witness to not testify, the testimony can cause damage to themselves. What?! Pleading the fifth is not something most people would think to do on the spot. Actually, thinking back to yesterday in Miss John Guard's room. <clears throat> oh, my God. oh shit, that scared me. Adrian Andrews! Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed, understood? Alright. That's it. That's when Francisca planted this idea into her head. She must have told Miss Andrews to not testify if things look bad. You did a good job proving everything up to this point, Phoenix. But there is still one thing you haven't done. Something I haven't... Uh, something I haven't done. <laughs> What's wrong, Miss Bright? Are you finished already? Run out of evidence? <gasps> what is so humorous, Miss Andrews? I'm sure you've realized this as well, Your Honor. But... Everything the good R here has proven up to this point is meaningless. What? Everything you have proven is circumstantial. Oh, excuse me. Circumstantial? Yes, circumstantial. You have yet to provide a single piece of definitive proof. Proof that Miss Andrews did in fact harbor a wish to murder Mr. Karina. Thank you for saying that, because I do. I do. Miss Andrews, you, did you want to kill Mr. Karina? I believe this may lead to me, to me incriminating myself, so I will abstain from answering. But Miss Andrews, if you do that, it would be the same as admitting your guilt, don't you think? Maybe so, or maybe not. There is nothing to prove either way. Besides, you don't even know what crime I would be guilty of uh, guilty of due to my silence. No! She's taking that defiant attitude again. Mia, what should we do? Somehow, we've landed in the worst possible situation. The way I got it. I think we have reached a certain conclusion at this point in, the, in time. Miss Adrian Andrews has refused to testify. And the defense's theory that she is the actual murderer has not been fully substantiated with solid definitive proof. But that's not true. Hard safe. The one thing that she asked us to not bring up, we're gonna have to bring up in order to break her. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Adrian, but it's, there's only, that's the only way. In this situation, there is only one thing this court can do, and that is to declare a recess. Recess! I request that both the prosecution and the defense look further into this matter. And at tomorrow's trial... T tomorrow We don't have a tomorrow. If we don't get a not guilty verdict today, then... Please wait, Your Honor. Th that's not necessary. The trial... Please continue the trial. What are you sweating for? Your client is getting one more day to live, isn't he? That... that's not it! This isn't about that! Edwards, I know you know who the real killer is! Please... Please, let the trial continue! If I don't get the verdict, then Maya... Huh? But it is impossible to continue as long as the witness refuses to testify. Now then, the court is... It is not impossible for the trial to continue. <gasps> Mr. Edwards, what are you? It's true, Miss Andrews holds the right against self-incrimination. However, at the topic of the conversation where something unrelated to whatever she may be guilty of, then she has no right to withhold testimony. Y yes, that's very true, but... Safe state. Edwards, my boy, as soon as we brought up Maya, that's when it was like, wait, what? Un momento, por favor. Okay, I'm getting way too nervous to the point where I think I might start after which is bad. 
Uh, I hope that doesn't come to that, because the only other time I did that was at one of my other jobs, and I don't want to go through that again. No, thank you. Uh, but I also want to stop having to constantly get up and go to the bathroom because of this. Yes, that is very true, but actually, there is one little thing that I'm curious about. Miss Andrews. When you found the victim's dead body, you poured yourself a glass of juice. Yes, and? I can't help but think how unnatural that is. Usually when one finds a body, they are shaken up and stirring a glass of juice. Shaken, not stirred. So my actions were unusual, but I've already- Before you speak, I want to state that if you have a reason behind your actions, I would like you to testify to that effect. Testify? Your Honor, I would like to request that the witness testify again as to what happened once you first discovered the victim's body. Whatever we found out in this testimony should in no way implicate the witness. Hmm. I don't know what it is about Edra today, but I can't get a good read off of him. Is he friend or foe? I just don't know. I think it's a bit of both. He's playing on our side, but he's also trying to do his thing too, so. I mean, he's playing as the, you know, as the villain and the antagonist, but at the same time, he's trying to help too. So he's just making it seem like he's not, but he is, I feel like. The court acknowledges the prosecutor's request. Miss Andrews, did you please? When I found the body. That glass of juice, I didn't really pour it for myself. I was surprised when I walked into the room and saw it in that messy state. And Juan, he was sitting slumped over and tired looking in the corner. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he, wa that he was dead just didn't cross my mind. To be honest, I thought he had just fainted or something, so I went to pour him some juice. Wait. When I realized that he was dead, that's when I knocked the fire base over. Didn't you say- Wait. Hmm. So you poured that glass of juice for the victim. Why didn't you say so in your earlier testimony? I didn't think I needed to include something so trivial. Phoenix, please be careful here. If you can't find anything wrong with this testimony, then there's nothing left. I know. Edgeworth. What the heck is going on in that brain of yours? Now then, Mr. Wright, you might begin to cross his ammunition. But didn't you say you poured that glass for yourself? Because you were- What's going on? I'm <laughs> so confused. Look at the heart save. But, there wasn't anyone else in the room, right? Of course not. Then, who did you pour for? Mr. Wright, there was a rhyme and reason for everything. Can you wait just a little longer for it to be re revealed to you? In other words, right? Be quiet and listen. Precisely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Ugh. Mm -hmm. That's what I should have said. So, it was a mess? Are you sure it wasn't messy because of your fight with Mr. Karita? Why are you still implicating this? I understand your frustrations at not being able to prove your theory. However, before you go accusing people of crimes, go find yourself some evidence. Ah. And then, what did you see next, witness? And one who was sitting slumped over an entire looking in the corner? Sumped over? Yes. He was just sitting there with his head tilted forward, eyes closed. What if... What if she wasn't the murderer and she did that because she didn't want suspicion to be put on her? You know? That's what I'm thinking. He really looked like he was sleeping. Is it just me or did that right there sound a little... odd? Yeah. See, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Was my point earlier that... No, I don't think I've made that point. I think, I, I think what it is is that... She found it. She she's telling the truth. She did not kill him. She found him slumped over. She put on the costume after like after she realized she was dead because she thought that someone would put the blame on her. So she went and ran out of there with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the comma with the stuff that he was wearing, the costume. However, someone planted that stuff in there for him to be implicated. Right? I don't I don't know. I'm. I think my thoughts are everywhere. When I saw him sitting like that, the thought that he was dead didn't cross my mind. Then what did, you know, what did cross your mind? I thought maybe he had smashed everything up in anger because he lost the Grand Prix. And then felt tired after his rampage, so he decided to take a nap. Anyways, that's what I thought. I see, so you didn't think it was that at all? 
To be honest, I thought he had just faded or something, so I went to pour him some juice. He thought he fainted? I thought he was asleep at first, but then the room was in such a messy, messy state, I thought maybe he had gotten into a fight with someone. And that's when he went to pour the glass of juice? Yes, he always has a hard time waking up, so Juan always has a glass of tomato juice to drink. Hmm, I see. And after that, whatever next? I didn't know that. I realized that he was dead, that's why I knocked the flower vase over. And how did you come to realize that he was, in fact, dead? I shook him over and over, but I never got a response. So I set the glass down on the dresser and tried to take his pulse. I... I was shocked, and staggered backward. And knocked the flower vase over, so that's what happened. Yes. This is what it all comes down to. Huh? This is the absolute end for both sides. And Adrian is letting her guard down. Phoenix, now is our best chance yet to kill the prosecution's case. Isn't that a bit harsh? Miss Andrews, will you tell us the truth this time? There was something that he said something on. I don't remember which one. Let me see. Right there. One more time. Let me let me let me read that actually. No, I guess not. Okay. Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hmm. Don't know why I thought that was right. Um... I'm just gonna hard save too. Damn, the fact that he said that with that one's what's tripping me up. I'm pretty sure I already did that one, I don't know. I have no idea what it could be. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just gonna go back and just price everything. Oh my god, really? Is it because of the the thing being fall- The thing. Is it because the vase fell onto the case on the floor? Is that what it is? I think that's what it is. So you honestly didn't think he was dead when you found- when you found him? Ha! Huh. No, not at all. Even though this is what you saw when you discovered the body? What is the meaning of this? Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? There was a knife sticking straight out of Mr. Karita's chest. Oh, that's right. Anyone who saw this scene would have immediately thought that here was a dead man. Ah, uh, um, that's, um, you see. I doubt a single person in the world would mistake this for someone who fainted, and then so nonchalantly go pour something to drink. Your point is, Miss Andrews, your testimony just now, it was all one giant lie. And your lie has proven one very thing very clearly. That you are the real killer. Ah, uh, here we go again. No. It looks like the defense has somehow brought the ugly truth to light. The defendant, Mr. Man on Guard, is not guilty after all. That, but that's impossible. You're wrong. Miss Andrews, try to have some composure. It it wasn't me! It wasn't me, I tell you! It was me! I swear! He's the one who killed Juan! But you were the one who refused to testify! And your reason for not doing so was that you might end up incriminating yourself! That's because... Miss Andrews, I will give you one last chance. What exactly are you hiding that may incriminate you? I... I... I refuse! 
lys. Så tager så far. Well, then there is no need for this court to continue any further. Mr. Madam Guard's innocence has been clearly demonstrated. Is is it over? Have we have we found the truth at last? I don't think so. What's wrong, Phoenix? Usually, well, usually the real killer confesses his or her guilt. And now that I think about it, this is the first time someone hasn't. Now then, I would like to hand down my verdict for Mr. Man on Guard. Objection! Yeah, defend. Your Honor, the prosecution feels that it would be premature to pass down a verdict at this time. But what? The reason is quite simple. Oh, you silly goober. The witness is yet to speak the absolute real truth. Oh, and how would you know this? The absolute real truth? What are you? Witness, don't you understand yet? Huh? I don't know who planted this silly idea in your head, but as long as you protect yourself through your silence, Man on Guard will go free, and in this place, you will become the guilty party. Th that's that's a lie. I I don't believe you. What? I I was told if I spoke, if I spoke, then it would be all over, and Man would never be declared guilty. What in the world is she talking about? Has she lost it? I... I can't speak about it. I'm too scared. It's Francisca Von Karma. Huh? Don't you remember, Phoenix? Miss Andrews lives by gripping tightly onto the words of another. Because she doesn't have the strength to believe in herself. Th then, right now, Miss Andrews is... Excuse me. Yesterday, she was tossed a lifesaver by Miss Von Karma. Don't say a word, no matter what happens. If you do... Man on guard will be acquitted. Miss Andrews undoubtedly believes in those words right now and is clinging on to them. Th then what should we do? This this is the first time I've ever come across anything like this. But Miss Andrews has to be the killer, right? All we have to do now is, is get our not guilty. That is my only priority. It wasn't me. I'm begging you. Please believe me. I didn't kill Juan. Help. Please. Someone. Help me. Oh, jeez. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. The court can, can't continue on like this, therefore I'd like to hear what you intend to do. Uh, save state. And heart save. Because I am as scared as she is. I am actually really scared. Call me a pansy if you want, but I am actually really scared. What I intend to do... What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Right. I suggest you think very carefully about this. Think about what this witness did and what she did not do. And think about who was the real mastermind behind this crime. Who was the real mastermind? Isn't that obvious? There is no one else it could be except the woman crying over there. Right? Come now. What will you do? What kind of man are you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Uh... Okay, I see now. We have to force her to testify. I have to win a complete acquittal today. There's no way around that. But... I can't bring myself to do it like this. Not when she's making a face like that. Miss Andrews? I would like to know what you are really hiding. Mr. Wright, are you sure you know what you're doing? Sure, Mr. Ongard will get an acquittal, but in this place you will be found guilty. Is this... Is this how you really want this trial to end? Be quiet! How dare you! You... You're trying to trick me! That's enough. I commend you for trying, Mr. Edgeworth. However, it's clear that the defense's theory is the truth. You're wrong! Oh, I don't think so. Such a shame. <laughs> I had hoped things wouldn't come to this, however. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? Miss Andrews, since you absolutely refuse to testify, it falls on my shoulders to disclose this to the court. Stop! Mr. Edgeworth? This witness, how should I put this? She has an illness. What? And because of this illness, she has tried to commit suicide in the past. Oh, shoot. Stop! Please stop! Oh, it looks like I didn't have to. Clean. No matter how much you want to hide it, it's no use. I have the evidence right here. That's the second part of the suicide report. The attempted suicide report. What will you do now, witness? 
You know what I am about to do, don't you? I will now reveal to the court the true nature of this pitiful woman known as Adrian Andrews. The secret of her codependency nature. Having other people know about her scares her more than anything else in the world. Please, please stop! I beg you! If people find out! If people find out! I... how? <laughs> if you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. Damn. Hedgeworth, how could you be so cold? However, before you die, I will put the fill the truth from your breathing lips. No matter what I have to do. So, will you tell the court yourself, or shall I? Either is fine with me. Hey, I'll talk, but please help me. Nothing matters anymore. My crime. When I first saw him, I really thought he had faded. Honest. When I realized he was dead, that's when I formulated my plan. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made a dash back to Matt's room. And then, I stabbed Womp's dead body with a knife and ripped off the button. Just when I finished and was returning to Matt's room, I had a bit of an inconvenience. And that's why... That's why I ended up using the Nickel Samurai's costume. Stab the body? With the knife? But why would you do that? Isn't it obvious? To pin the blame on a certain someone, certain person, a certain cowardly man. But... What do you mean by all of this? It might take this quarter a little while to understand, but... I, I think I understand. This is the truth. The real, the real killer is Matt, that scumbag of a man. I'll never forgive him. He's trying to escape his guilt again, just like last time. Last time? So, Miss Andrews stabbed the victim, Juan Carita, in the chest with a knife. However, she didn't do it with murder in mind. She did it with the intent of framing man on guard for the murder. And this, this is her crime. What? How was this possible? I mean, wasn't Miss Andrews supposed to be the real murderer? Mr. Wright, please get over your shock and commence the cross-examination. Oh, wow. They, uh... Oh wow, okay. This this product just turned on its head and this is getting really, really, really Oh, I oh Yo, when I thought I was nervous before, oh this is nothing compared to that was nothing compared to this. Oh my goodness. But you could tell from the state of the room was in that there must have been a fight. Are you telling the truth when you say that you did not know he was dead? He had a scarf tied around his neck, but that scarf was a part of the Jedi Ninja's costume, so I didn't think of anything. I didn't, so I didn't think anything about it was strange. His head was also tilted down a bit, so I couldn't see his face that well. That's why I thought I'd wake him up and went to pour the juice. When I realized he was dead, that was when I formulated my plan. What is this plan you had? I knew right away that the, mur the murderer was mad. I knew because Juan, he was going to expose Matt's weakest, uh, weak point to the world. So Matt did this to stop Juan and silence him for good. That's when I thought, I should forge some evidence and pin this crime on Matt. So the forged pieces of evidence, so the forged pieces of evidence were the knife and the bun. The first thing that came to mind was bite the knife. Once I made sure there was no one in the hallway, I made the dash back to Matt's room. That was so you could get the knife, correct? The knife Matt used at dinner had his fingerprints all over it. I thought if I used that, then the police would certainly turn their eyes towards him. Matt was napping with his costume on at the time. Why do you look so happy? I slipped in, took the knife, and returned to the scene of the crime. Oh, probably because she knew that he was asleep. And then I stabbed Mon's dead body with the knife and ripped them off the button. Oh my goodness. Oh. <sighs> So you were the one to stab the victim with that knife. It gives me goosebumps to think about it now. What a horrible thing I did. But at the time, I... Oh, excuse me. I couldn't control my own body. I move on its own. Then, when I stabbed one step body, I suddenly realized something. If I used the button somehow, I could make Matt look even more suspect. So you thought to rip off the buttons, or put on the buttons and, plant, and then plant it in Mr. Ungarsakawa? Yes. That's what I had planned to do. 
But things never go that smoothly, do they? Just when I finished, it was returned to Matt's room. I had a bit of an inconvenience. An inconvenience? There was a woman with a camera at the ready, loitering in the hallway. Ah, Lotta. I'm willing to bet my spikes it was Lotta. <laughs> There's spikes. There was also a woman with a ray gun at the ready, pacing back and forth. Oh, old back. That's Miss Oldback for you. I had already been caught and made into a big scoop for a certain, week, certain weekly tabloid once. So I couldn't very well go out looking like myself and get caught again. That makes sense. That's why I ended up using a nickel samurai costume. You were the one who prepared that costume, weren't you? Yes, I took it from Global Studios. I also put it into Juan's guitar case the day before the award ceremony. You did this in preparation for the press conference, correct? Yes, Juan wanted to wear that costume and hold a press conference in it. He was going to disclose Matt's big secret there. And what is his secret? That, I don't know. Anyway, I thought that if I were to leave Juan's room in the Nickel Samurai costume, then people would think that Matt was a real murderer. I was very careful not to leave any fingerprint spot when I opened the guitar case. I absolutely did not want anyone to know about the costume. I think we've heard enough. So, after that, he went back to Mr. Ongard's room and planted the button. Into Matt's Takama? Yes. After that, I folded up the costume I was wearing and put it into a bag. Then I stuck it out of the hotel and got rid of it. But my word! What does all this mean? Mr. Edgeworth, is it? The real criminal is Matt Ongard. Yesterday, that woman prosecutor sent me down for a talk. Francisca, huh? She said that I should, under no circumstances, confess to what I had done. That if I just kept quiet, then Matt would be found guilty for sure. I... I had no choice but to believe in her words. What this witness has done is clearly unlawful. However, as long as her testimony stands, we can be certain she is not the real killer. Wait, Your Honor. The defense still... Stop. Right. It's pointless. At this point in time, it is not possible to indict Mr. Andrews on anything. Yes, exactly. There isn't a single piece of evidence that points to her as a murderer. This cross-examination of the witness is over, and so is today's trial. We couldn't establish that the witness was a culprit. Please let it go, Mr. Wright. Put! Mr. Edwards, please place, place Miss Andrews under arrest for further questioning. Understood, Your Honor. The prosecution will arrange for her detention immediately. That's all. Court is adjourned for today. I got the bad ending, didn't I? Today's... Today's trial. It's over. And I didn't win an acquittal. Witness, would you mind if I ask you something? Huh? Edgeworth? What is it? Before you leave court today, I wondered if I might look at one thing. The card in your hand. It's had my interest for quite some time now. What exactly is it? Oh, this? Mr. Wright also asked about this. Although I didn't remember at the time you asked me about it, Mr. Wright. I remember just now. I found this in a room on that day. The room? That day? Yes. I found this card when I discovered Juan's body. It was lying there, right next to him. You found that card? Next to the victim's body? I suppose I must have unconsciously slipped it into my pocket. But it's not as if this card has any relevance to Juan's murder, right? Yeah, I guess not. But it's still a strange card, if you ask me. But as far as, clue, as a clue to this case, I don't see why. Oh, Edgeworth. Witness! That card! Give it to me! Hurry! Edgeworth? Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. I... I didn't mean to! What is this all about? I've never seen such an emotional Edgeworth in my entire life. That card. What in the world is it? And what does it mean? Are you serious? Oh no, really? Oh no, there's more. Oh no. 
Oh, I thought we were done. No. <laughs> no, I'm not stopping. I refuse. March 22nd, 524 p.m. right in Cola offices. Mystic Meyer! Mystic Meyer! There, there, pearls. I, I can't take it anymore. Wah! Look, it'll be all right. Everything may still work out. Hmm. The condition was that we had to get a not guilty verdict. And so far, the kidnapper has kept his word and hasn't hurt Maya. And he won't because Mr. Ongar hasn't been given a guilty sentence yet. <laughs> Cheer up! We don't have time to stand around crying. We have to get going. You're right. Mystic Maya's in much more pain than I am. Yes, that's right. So... Hey, you guys! Glad I caught up to caught you, pal. Mr. Scruffy Detective! Oh, boy. Looks like Detective Gumshoe has been dubbed Mr. Scruffy Detective in Pearl's book now. It's just plain old Mr. Dick Gumshoe now, and I came to talk to you, pal. But we're kind of busy right now. Okay. What you got to tell me? Because I'm scared. So, what are you going to do from now on? What do you mean, pal? Well, you've been fired, right? So, do you have a new job lined up yet? Oh, that! Uh, uh what am I supposed to do now, pal? I, I don't have anything coming in at all until my next payday. What are you talking about? You don't have another payday. I guess that means I'm just gonna have to work here at your place, pal. Say what? You'll be searching for things that will prove Mr. Ongar's innocence all day, right? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna help you, pal. Oh, hell yeah. I've got lots of experience in investigating and watching over people's places. And I'm great at making really simple meals, pal. I'll take care of it all. Oh, wait a minute. I just feel... <coughs> I just remember something. There is I forgot there was this portion to this game because we still have we still have yet to find everything that we need to find in this case. I remember certain things. That's it's all coming back to me. Okay, cool. Come on, Mr. Nick! Let's let Mr. Scruffy Detective take care of things. Ah, uh, okay. By the way, what's your best dish? Instant noodles, pal. Why am I surrounded by people who eat cheap unhealthy foods? Edwards. That was the first time I've ever seen Mr. Edgeworth act like that. Never thought he'd say something like, he didn't care if Mr. Edgeworth killed herself. He, he said that? That's horrible! Because I am doing that, we got the truth finally. The truth. It's Andrew's last testimony. I wonder if that was the truth. I'll give you that there was nothing strange in the testimony itself, but I still think there is something fundamentally wrong with the whole thing. I mean, about that thing, pal? I wish you want to want, want to- no. I mean, almost need to frame Mr. Ongar. I couldn't figure that out from anything she said all day. That, and you're saying that testimony was a lie? Not a lie, per se. It just feels like there's more here than meets the eye. Or that's what Edwards would like us to believe. Th that's such a dirty trick! Even that one prosecutor was better than that! Francisca Von Karma. Speaking of Von Karma, do you have any more information on her condition? Wasn't she shot this morning? Miss Von Karma was shot today on her way to the trial by a pistol pal. But she's going to be fine, right? I mean, Edward said she was in stable condition, but... Well, she was shot in the shoulder, so she's okay and still hanging in there. They should be done taking the blood out, so she's probably resting in the hospital. Which one? What? Are you going to visit her, pal? No, well, I was kind of thinking about it. Hey! You've actually got a heart, don't you? She looked like she was being tortured to death not being able to go to the trial today. Maybe it'd be good for her if you let, went and let her whip you for a bit, pal. Let's go let her whip us, Mr. Nick! No! No! No, 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 no. No, I'm definitely not going. Um, let's see. The name of the hospital. Oh, yeah. The Hottie Clinic. No. Really? Oh, no. That name sends a chill down my spine. Well, I guess it can't hurt to stop by and say hi. All right. You gonna stay here, pal? Okay, cool. We're gonna go ahead and go down there. March 22nd, Hottie Clinic Reception. I never thought I'd ever come back to this place. Oh, hey, look, there's my man over there still walking with the cane, and there's a person behind the desk as well, over there sitting in the chair. You, you, you. Most of us will give you. <clears throat> yes, are you here to visit a patient? Ah, <laughs> uh, hi. Wait a second, you're. Hmm? Yes, I'm Dr. Hottie. Ho, 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 ho. I forgot. Was that the voice I gave him? I'm gonna give him that voice. Why are you still here? Mm, yes, what is it? Mm, can I help you? Can you tell me? <laughs> yes. Director Hottie! 
Oh, Director Otter. And Edgeworth? Hmm, yes, I'm Director Otter. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, you're that man from this morning. Mm -hmm, yes, what is it? Uh huh. Director, Francisco. How is Francisco for a Hmm, you don't need to worry. Mm -hmm, yes, she's getting good hands. Mm -hmm, uh, because you see, I'm personally taking good care of her. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and the thing, the surgery, went well. <laughs> you have my gratitude. It looks like Edgeworth doesn't know about this director and his secret. She looks so pitiful, absolutely terrified. <laughs> yes, I <Fun> understand. <laughs> yes, the opponent was a gun after all. <laughs> and when I snuck up on her real secretly, she was screaming really loud. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I see. Ah, but she's very cute too. When I do that, she whipped me with her weapon, huh? <laughs> Boy, did I cry like a baby. <laughs> yes, but I think I can get used to it. <laughs> oh, hello. Go back to your room. You're so mean. <laughs> so mean, my Fisker Fisker. <laughs> but that's good too. <laughs> okay, okay. I. Right. Yes, it's time for my IV drops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And what are those tulips doing in her hand, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Ah, I knew I shouldn't have come here. <laughs> it's okay, we're here with Edward. I was shot in front of the courthouse by my right shoulder. Hmm, it's no big deal. This sort of thing happens all the time. I even had full intentions of running the trial this morning. I know exactly why you said that, because it would be explained in another game that I played and I loved. And we're gonna play later on. Probably next year. I don't know, because I intend to play the third game later this year. So next year we're going to start doing the Edgeworth game. I cannot wait. But, but that would have been too much. Yeah, you looked like you were deadly, deadly scared until only a few minutes ago. But I was dragged here by that prosecutor. He even went so far as to grab me by the wrist the whole way here. It was the only, logic, it was the only logical course of action given the bullet was still lodged in your shoulder. But with me doing so, I found myself having to clean up after you and that irresponsible deal you made. Hmm. I think I know what deal he's referring to. Miss Von Karma, you made a deal with Miss, and Miss Andrews yesterday, didn't you? I don't know what you are and what you mean. In order to make sure you got your guilty verdict on Mr. Ungard, he told Miss Andrews to not testify in court today. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you have proof that I made such a deal? You're denying it? It looks like you were lucky, Mr. Phoenix, right? If I had been in court today, this trial would, have, would already be over. All while hiding Miss Andrews' own crime? That isn't my problem, whether she had tampered with evidence or not. I have only one objective, to find our God guilty of murder. The end justifies the means, Mr. Phoenix, right? The end justifies the means. Miss Von Karma, Adrian Andrews believed you when you said, if you don't tell the truth of what really happened, then on guard will be found guilty. And what does that have to do with me? Because of that, she is now in danger of being found guilty herself. All because she believed in your words until the very end. That still has nothing to do with me. She's just a weak person, that's all. But you had to know she was. Ow! I think visiting hours here are about over. So, if you'll excuse me. What's wrong? Why did she suddenly cut you off? Probably because she thinks I had the advantage in, the, in that argument. Yes, Edris. Edris. Hi, buddy. What's going on, pal? Let's talk. What happened today at the trial, Edgeworth? That was not like you at all. I mean, I know you knew about Miss Andrew's condition. You could have made her testify as many times as you wanted, but to go that far. Ah, uh, but she wouldn't testify about that until I said something. Listen, right. This courtroom is a garden of judgment. I am putting myself on the line when I stand there. And that's why I made the witness do the same. It's only natural. Okay, let's talk about Edgeworth's card. By the way, Edgeworth, you were really angry in court today. That's rare for you. Witness that card. Give it to me. Hurry. Do you have any idea what you have stupidly yet inadvertently done? This. I can't believe you hid this from me all this time. That card. What in the world is it? You mean this? Lesson right. This is top secret information. You absolutely cannot leak this. A special investigations team has existed for a number of years, but few know of it. I, I understand. They're tasked to find the owner of this card. <gasps> oh wait, that's right, that's right. This is the, this is the, mm, I can't say the name. Now it's it. A man named Shelly the Killer. And just as his name states, he's a killer, an assassin, the best at that. An assassin? 
Put your card added to the court record. I'm surprised it didn't. Oh, do they even pop the name in this game? I don't know. So who is this Shelly the Killer? No, oh, excuse me. The Killer is the name of the Smongs of a long-standing line of assassins. Long-standing. The name first appeared about 100 years ago. I hear. Shelly is a professional name of, a, of the third hair to the Day Killer name. So because his professional name is Shelly, he leaves like cards. He leaves cards with a shell on them. He has a habit of making sure to leave a card by the body of his victims. Why would he do something like that? We think it is a part of his duty to his clients. His duty? He leaves a card, and his clients could be assured it was he who killed the victim. It also serves as an insurance against any charges being pushed onto his clients. I see. The killer values trust, the trust between his clients and himself above all else. It seems that this is one of one honorable assassin with a moral conscience. I guess that even honorable assassins can exist. So you think this assassin, you think he's the one who did the killing in this case? It would appear that way. The discovery of the card basically confirms it, wouldn't you agree? Shelly the killer, huh? I noticed something at the trial today. You were behaving in a very strange manner. Is something the matter? I guess I should just tell him. Maya, she's been kidnapped. K kidnapped? What does the kidnapper want? An acquittal. I see. I had no idea. I will prepare a rescue team as soon as possible and resolve this by tomorrow. Really? Did you hear that, Mr. Nick? Mr. Nick is going to. Stop trying to console me, Edward. I don't need your pity. Mr. Nick? There's no way you can find her. You don't even have a single clue to go on. There's only one way to save her. I, I have to get an acquittal somehow. It's the only way. Right. Listen. You need to know something. Juan Carrito was killed by Shelly the Killer. And the client who ordered the job is man on guard. Your own client. Please stop. I can't listen to you. I can't believe that. I see. Well, if you want to continue your investigation, you will need this. What is it? The hotel right now is restricted to police personnel only, as we are looking for any clues that might lead us to Shelly the Killer. If you take this with you to the hotel, I'm sure they will let you enter. In any case, I must attend their preparations for Maya's rescue team. We'll meet again if anything should happen. Now if you'll excuse me. Mr. Nick? Do you... Do you think Mr. Uncard hired an assassin? No way. I mean, he doesn't have a psych lock. Yeah, I guess not. Maya. Please, all I ask is you make it home, safe and sound. <sighs> okay, so... Here's the thing I don't like about Phoenix. He doesn't believe anything people tell him. Well, it's it's it's, it's fair to say that he won't believe without evidence. But I mean, it seemed like Edgeworth generally cared about this whole situation. And that he knows more about this assassin than Phoenix could ever know. So he would know who or whether or not, you know, someone hired him to do the killing on on um, on Juan. But yet Phoenix Specifically, Edgeworth. Anything that comes out of Edgeworth, Edgeworth, Edgeworth's mouth, he does not want to believe, because of all the things that Edgeworth has done in his past, which I understand. But at the same time, this man, you can tell that he has changed. Like, come on now. But whatever, he'll learn eventually. Date? Question mark. Time? Question mark. Location? Question mark. We are Maya. <laughs> I guess even kidnappers can be a little clumsy. I'm scared. Clumsy enough to drop a card like this for me. And even though he said he was an assassin. I mean, he's just making that up. Like how Nick does with everything in court. Oh, shoot. Anyway, let's try out the card trick with this card I just found. You still haven't? Sounds like I got the door open. Okay, time to go take a look around. I'm scared. I don't want to. I'm scared. I'm scared. Don't jump out of me, man. You gotta scare the crap out of me again, please. Oh. What is this place? I've got a feeling I'm not in the hotel anymore. Are those videos over there? Well, I'll worry about that later. For now, I should be looking for clues. That way, I can show them the sis and maybe get out of here. I'll tell you what, I am scared. Wow, I've never seen a TV this big before. Now where's the power button? Hmm. Tell me, it's busted. I would so die a happy samurai fan if I ever got to see the nickel samurai on a TV like this. Ha! Ah, I can't believe I just made a joke about dying at all things considered. <laughs> I uh, know, it's okay. What is this thing? An antenna, I guess? And this is a VCR? There sure are a lot of electronic gadgets here. 
But what is it? What is an antenna doing here? Hmm. I can't see it very well in the darkness, but it doesn't seem like there's anything there. What's that? There's a framed picture sitting on this coffee table. It's a picture of a woman. She's kind of pretty. Hey, there's like something written here. Let's see. I think it says, with love, Celeste. What? That's that could be a clue. That's weird. What's a figurine doing on the sofa in a place like this? I think it's a bear. Oh, how cute. But it's got a lot of cuts and slits on it. I wonder if it's some kind of puzzle or something. It's so dark in here that I can barely see, but he's gonna feel like videotapes. All of them. Just what kind of room is this? Oh, hey! It's a computer! I've never really used one before. Um, I have no idea where the power switch on this thing is. Dread! It goes my plan to use this somehow to get out of here. It doesn't look like I can use a card to open this door. There's a little hole at the bottom of the door. If only I was a little skinnier, then maybe I'd be able to crawl through here. Oh no. No, 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 no. Oh, this simply will not do. I cannot have you wandering around at will. Yeah! Ah, no. No, 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 no. It seems that your Mr. Wright is truly concerned about you. He is? For now, I would suggest you remain cooperative. If you cannot, there are ways in which I can help you. Ways? You mean... Dead men tell no tales is how the saying goes, correct? D -d 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 dead I'm almost certain I told you on our first meeting. I am an assassin. No way! You're lying! I mean, an assassin? People are not always who they appear to be. March 22nd, 7.04 p.m. Hottie Clinic Reception. Mr. Nick? Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, Pearls? Got caught up in my thoughts about my situation. Mr. Edgeworth has left, you know? I guess and for now, I have no choice but to believe in Mr. Ongard. But I think I should listen to his story one more time. Alright, let's go. Let's get going, too. Okay! Okay, so we're going back to writing coal. Hi, Gumshoe, buddy old pal. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I... No, damn. What happens if I present this? Oh yeah, do you know about this card? Card? Edgeworth, for some reason, went pale the instant he saw this card. Hey, I know what this says, pal. You do? No matter what way you look at it, I say it's a picture of a shell. Um, that's it? Oh yeah, that's right. Mr. Edgeworth really likes those cooked snail things. Um, what are they called again? Escargot Go or something like that? Mr. Nick, I think we just solved the mystery of why Mr. Andrew's face turned pale, right? Right? As I suspected, Gumshoe has no clue. Hmm. Could you please take a look at this? Um, I can't think of anything to say about this, pal. Why don't I make us some Mr. Noodles and stuff? That's okay, really. Huh. I guess we should go to the detention center really quick and see what he's what he says before we head down to the hotel. March 22nd, Detention Center Visitor's Room. Hmm. I'm sorry, but visiting hours are over for today. Oh. Ah, I have too many questions I need to ask. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm Phoenix Wright, a lawyer for one of the... You're Mr. Wright, you say? Oh, yeah. There's a message here for you. A message? It's from Man on Guard. Ah, here you are. What did he write? Is this something really important? I don't know. Well, let's see what it has to say. To the lawyer dude. To the lawyer dude. I got really, I got something really important to tell you. Why do I feel uneasy all of a sudden? Oh, Mr. Wright. So actually, I have a favor to ask him. I have this cat named Shu. I didn't put out a lot of food when I left the house, so he's probably pretty hungry. You think you could drop by my house and feed Shu for me, dude? My house is just a little ways down from the hotel, alright? <laughs> this is terrible! Let's hurry! We have to feed these kids! I'm sure poor Shu's stomach is growling by now. Oh, yeah, I guess. Aww. 
jammed into a pocket. Okay. A client's request is a request. Guess I should go check up on his cat. Is that really the next place we have to go? I thought we were going to go to the hotel. Well, we have to go down to the hotel anyway. Because it's down a ways from it. That's right. March 22nd. Gatewater Hotel, Hotel Lobby. All right now, Mr. Nick. Let's go look for clues. We have to mystic my sleep. You shall not press. <gasps> Miss Oberg, don't devour my name and turn it into a gas spike out of proof. If you don't put that gun down, I swear. But the real, I would make it look like the bear guy again. Although I did get a piece of gun from that boy, just as he promised. But what I really wanted was something more valuable. Big. Keep your hands off of me! This helmet is airtight! No air gets, gets seen and no air gets out! Um, what does your helmet have to do with anything? Huh! Don't, you, don't think you could get me into smooth or suit with certain questions! You're going to ask the premium if you want to get by! Fine! I'm not kidding. I will. I I... Girl, you... Be <laughs> Ooh, you better not, man. A close line from hell is just waiting for you. Just try me. Just try me. Um... Okay. So I refuse to do any voice acting for her anymore. I can love her. Let's just do this. Leave me alone. Maybe if I show her this letter I got from my trust. Um, Miss Obey, if you would look at... What? Come on, look at this worthless piece of... Ugh, is that her perfume? Pheromone de Amour, I smell? Ugh. Let's see here. Would you please allow this unsophisticated young person to, go to conduct this investigation? Yours truly, Miles Eckworth. She... He did not write that, you lying. Yours truly. Hm, that man's good at flattering. Fine, but only because I said so, you understand? Damn it. I just thought of something I have to do. Remember, no messing around. You do anything bad and I won't let you off the hook. It looks like she has strong feelings for Mr. Edgeworth. That may be, but you know nothing's going to come of it. That's so mean, Mr. Nick. Things are meant to be told and shared. Ow! Every time we talk about love, I always end up with a handprint on my face somehow. Damn, she smacked you up? Um, so anyway, let's continue our investigation. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That was a problem! Go and do what you gotta do! Stop coming back, damn it! Come on, old man! Please, man! Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm getting really upset now. Stop! Ah! What? What now? One little thing before I forget. You can't go into on guard's room today! Why? The police's main investigation team is going to be there in there. Oh, okay, you hear? I wonder if they're the team in charge of investigating the killer. Don't go in there! Say one foot in there and you'll face the wrath of money all back! Huh. God. Here, I'm gonna save really quick. I feel like we should go ahead and actually check out, um, on guard's house before we continue. I, I feel like... God, 3, 1? Is there four parts to this? Because there's four parts in there. Great. Let's check this out first. March 22nd. On guard mansion. Living room. Hmm. Sure is dark. How about turn on the light? Oh, wow. Wow. So this is what a star's house looks like. Must be nice to be rich. Come on, Mr. Nick. Let's find Shoe, the kitty cat. Shoe. Shoe. Aw. So I guess this is Shoe. Oh, I'm gonna love the cat! Hello, Shoe! Hee <laughs> The cat seems to like pearls. Pardon me. Oh. <gasps> no! Why? No, 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 Oh. Oh, okay. 
All right, I wasn't expecting you. <gasps> May I help you with something, Mr. Oh, uh, we're lawyers. Actually, I'm Mr. Garth's lawyer. The Masters. Then, you must be Mr. Wright. Yes. Ah, uh, it's a pleasure to meet your wonderful self. I am the family butler, John Doe. Get that out of here, man. You're that killer, bro. Get that shit out of here, they killer. Nice to meet you. Meow. Get that shit out of here, bro. Stop lying to me. You must know all sorts of things about Mr. On Guard, right? Honestly, sir. I don't believe my master is capable of such a foul deed as murder. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the master or his affairs. Hmm. How typically butler-like, as it were? I don't believe you. Just look at your face! Why is there a straight line? It's like you sewed your face together. That's creepy. Mr. Doe, how long have you served at this residence? Well, sir, I would have to say maybe about one year. And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. Blah, blah, blah. Of himself and his affairs. <laughs> you know, I would have thought Mr. Ogard the kind to have a maid over a butler. That's a very cute cat you've got here. It's my duty to take care of him. The master rather fancy shoe. Is that it? And, uh, anything else? No, not especially. It is not appropriate for a lowly servant to speak of the family cat. Always, crap. Well then, I guess I won't need this piece of scrap any paper anymore. It's now crumpled into a ball and thrown away. Well, I'm afraid I must take my leave of you now. Oh, we should probably get going ourselves. Ah, so young and yet already so accomplished. A master of law. But there's also a lot to be proud of in being a butler in charge of a house and all. Thank you for the compliment, sir. People are not always who they appear to be. Now, if you'll excuse me. Aww. Yeah, you can say that again, John Doe. Ah, a giant bicycle is flying through the air! That bicycle, Pearls, is one where you don't have to pedal and it moves on its own. Really? Wow! But sorry to disappoint you, it can't fly. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, there's a giant cooking hearth here. That's actually a fireplace. How are they different, Mr. Nick? You know, I've never actually seen a hearth before, come to think of it. You should come and visit Fay Manor then. I'll show you one where you do. How are you reading my mind too? What's going on? Okay, you know what? Let me look above the place that I want to. Huh? There are masks here. Yeah, that one in the middle is the Seal Samurai. The ones next to it are the Pink Princess and the Evil Magistrate. They fought many battles against the backdrop of Neo Tokyo. Well, you really know a lot about the Steel Samurai, Mr. Nick. I don't know whether to laugh or cry that I know more about that show than a kid. <gasps> oh, excuse me. What about this purple couch? It's a very comfortable and spacious lounge set. I wonder if famous stars drop by and sit around and have a good time. In any case, I don't really belong here, do I? Ah! What is with me? I'm feeling inferior today. Hmm? Don't worry about it. It's okay, Pearls. Oh, same thing. What about these stairs? Talking about the bike again. Okay, I see. What about this thing, the cabinet? Nope. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the thing that I tried to avoid. Let's just sneak here. There's another door over there. You shouldn't go wandering off over there, Mr. Nick. Yes, Pearls. Now I know how Maya feels when I tell her to stop playing around. What about this? No, oh, that's still part of the hearth or cooking thing. What about this? That's the same thing. Oh, the fireplace. Ah, I'm so stupid. Okay. The door. The door that has that little door right there, the doggy door or cat door that looks suspiciously familiar. For some reason, I don't know why. And the fact that Day Killer is here too, it's too convenient. Why is that? There's a small door at the bottom of this bigger door, Mr. Nick. I bet it's for Mr. On Guard's cat to use. Oh, you mean shoe? The door. It's locked tight. Well, I guess that's to keep noisy people from me, like me from entering it. That's weird, because wasn't it locked from the other side? So why is it locked from that, from this side now? Interesting. Huh. Okay, well, we're done with that area. 
So let's go on to Viral Hall. Oh, my voice is cracking. March 22nd, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. Looks like we're the only ones here. And yet, the hotel seems so busy somehow. Ah, uh, because the police team is scouring for clues about the killer. They don't have to look very far. Did they put up more food? They did. I want to eat a meal with Missing Maya again. Yeah, me too. Whenever I watch Missing Maya eat like she does, it makes me happy about eating, and then I can eat a lot. Well then, how about after we wrap up this case, we all go out for a huge 20 course meal? Okay, let's work really hard then. Why would you, why, why? Phoenix, you know I haven't had that kind of money. They haven't cleaned up all the food yet. There's a sad feeling hanging in the air now that the party is over. Until, uh, how's it go? Um, whatever party's over, tell the rest of the crew. That is such a beautiful sight. The chandelier? Yes, but I can't believe it. I can't believe that such a terrible murder happened under such a beautiful lights. It's shocking. What would you like to swing from the chandelier? The award ceremony was held on that stage. It was really fabulous. You just reminded me of the circus for a second. I wonder if everyone is alright. I heard that very big circus just recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they're all fine, Pearls. Hopefully. There's a grand set of doors over there. It's the doors Miles followed the bellboy out of, only to disappear. If only we had Ankh gone together. 